Okay, so we're going to reconnect the wires and we also have to put uh, another connection back on this one because as you can see here, the wire is frayed and we covered it up with tape. But we're gonna cut that off and we're also going to cut this one off and we're gonna put on the new connector. And I'll explain that procedure in a bit. But before we do that, we just wanna make sure that we mark where all the wires go, black, uh, purple, uh, just in case, because we don't have the diagram, but we're pretty sure that's where all the wires go. And of course, it's right on the bottom. Okay, so we also wanna test the capacitor and then we can put the connector back on and then plug it in. And so the reason that we have to check the capacitor is because when we open this harness up, we saw that this cable, this live wire, was touching this metal here, and so it was shorting. And we're worried that this short could cause something to go wrong with the capacitor. So that's why I have to test to make sure that it's not uh, faulty. If it's faulty, that means we're without AC for another day. So hopefully it's still okay. With the fan still connected, as you can see with this brown wire, if we measure the capacitance, it reads over limit. But when we disconnect, the wire and we connect it. It reads 2.9, which is almost three. So this is just a demonstration of why it's important to disconnect all your wires before you test the capacitance. Okay, so looks like the capacitor is good on the fan side. And when we test it on the compressor side, it reads 50.2 microfarads, which is about what we should expect. It should be 50. So it's a fin tolerance. Which means, good news, our capacitor isn't broken. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is my dad wants me to do a bit of field work. Uh, and I'm going to be connecting this myself. What we're going to do is we're going to cut the wire, I'm going to strip it a bit, and we're going to put on these new connectors. This might not be the best connectors because, as you can see, the original ones are copper, which is more conductive. But these connectors are all we got right now. So we're going to try this and uh, let's do it. Okay, so we're going to insert the shrink wrap as well because we want to further protect it. Uh, also I want to say, I am still learning. Uh, I'm not a fully fledged technician. Um, so you might see me not being perfect at doing things like, you know, opening these wires, or stripping these wires, sorry. Okay, so let it sit in there. So, yeah, I'm just demonstrating. I might not do things perfectly, but I'm getting there. And one day, I'll look back and I'll realize how far I've come. Okay, so my dad did, did, did this wire right here. You can see the connections on there along with the heat shrink. And so he's challenged me to try to do it with this red wire, which I'm going to do right now. So first let's cut the wire. Okay. And this is what the connection looked like before. <laughs> you can see my dad's attempt to try to insulate it and try to protect it from shorting here, but uh, clearly that didn't work out because what ended up burning was the connection side. But anyway, let's try stripping this wire. This one's a bit thicker than this one. Now this is the one I'm more used to using. So let's give us a, a bit of room so that we can turn it around and tie it on itself. Or twist it on itself, I mean. Okay, and let me go around and do it again. All right, so let's pull it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a connector and I'm going to loop it around. Also, I'm going to turn this wire backwards on itself and twist that in place. This is a bit harder with rubber gloves on. Give me a second. And it over. Okay. Then we're going to take pliers. 
and we're going to clamp that down. Let's try using this one. There we go. It's a bit messy. I'm not happy with my work. Okay, so let's try putting the heat shrink on. In retrospect, it would have been better to put the heat shrink on before we did all of this. But. Sometimes you have to go with what works best. Okay. And so now I'm going to shrink it. Let's start from the inside out. So let's get this a bit thinner. All right. Okay, so there's a lot of wind, so I'm going to use this uh, propane, propane torch to, wow, that's fast, to heat shrink this. Alright, and let's just close it up on this side. Okay, so now we're going to open up the connector. Let's open up that wing a bit just so it can fit around. Might be good enough, let me just see. I mean, the best way you can tell is just trying to put it on. There we go. No, honestly, yeah, it kind of looks a bit sloppy. So I'm not too, too, totally happy with my work, but I, I definitely need to get more experience in. I guess that's why technicians get paid the big bucks because they have to do all this sort of stuff. And of course, I'm still learning. So it's okay that I didn't do a perfect job. Okay, so we finished putting the connections on all three wires. And we tried putting them back in. But the thing is, they're not staying in. They're kind of loose. And since we know that the compressor shakes, then being even a tiny bit loose could lead to them falling out. And so we've realized that the actual issue is that the connection, these prongs, are corroded. And so even if we put these on correctly, they're not gonna stay on because they're just too corroded to uh, keep the connection. And so we're trying to think of a way to, to get around that problem of the, the connection of these prongs being corroded. Okay, so it's been like an hour since the last clip was filmed. And we, we as you can see, we jerry-rigged um, everything to work. What we ended up doing was the way that the prong looked like is that there's a circular pin coming out and there's a rectangular shaped wing coming uh, coming out from it. And that's really hard to think of a way to fix a wire to that. What we ended up doing was we ended up kind of coiling the wire around the, around the cylindrical pin behind the wing. And so if it tried to get pulled out, it would catch on the wing. So hopefully that kept it in and then we put some heat, heat shrink on it to hopefully reinforce that and uh oh yeah and that 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 wire that we connected actually came from a 240 volt cable so we just harvested it unfortunately it's not the right color as you can see we connected white to red and we even used a yellow connector for a black wire but that doesn't matter you know jerry rigging you sometimes you have to make sacrifices and we ended up connecting it back to the original wire so this wire goes to this one this one goes to this one. And maybe we'll come back later and replace it with something more robust. But as you can see right now, it seems like all of the connections are in there pretty solidly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to test it to make sure to see if it works first off. And then we're going to button it up and we're going to work on it uh, another day because it's dark right now. <laughs> 